That first basin evaporative cooler didn't work out. So what did I decide to do? I decided to get a second one. This is the Basin Ultra Air Cooler. It comes with seven LED light color options. It is eco-friendly. It has fast cooling, a leak-proof design, and low noise. Also, it has adjustable wind speeds. It has UVC sterilization technology. It has a 500 milliliter large water tank and adjustable wind directions. Most of these things are true. Okay, so first off, this is the Basin Ultra Air Cooler. It strikes me as one of the various iterations that are floating around that are the next version of what was the Arctic Air Ultra and all the permutations that were found on all the online shopping sites. This one is no exception. Instead of buying the Arctic Air Max, I believe it's called, I end up seeing this one by this brand and thought I'll just get this one and give it a shot. There are some really marked improvements from this from the Arctic Air Ultra that I tested last year, as well as a few drawbacks. First, let's go through the features that it actually does have. It does have LED lighting that illuminates the tank, which is pretty cool. It's seven different colors, and it has another mode where it'll ramp through all the colors. It does have three different fan speeds, and it has a 500 milliliter tank. It has an adjustable vent, and does not have UVC sterilization technology at all whatsoever on it, which I don't think is that much of a surprise. There are the usual things in the manual. They describe how to use it, maintenance, and the various warnings. The maintenance of it is pretty much the same as what you'd expect for the Arctic Air Ultra or those that are similar to it with these style filters, which is to every week either hand wash the filter or run it through the dishwasher. In this case, they don't mention anything about a dishwasher, but this, yeah, this does say that you can use a small brush, like a toothbrush or a bottle brush, etc., to clean out the tank inside the unit. And you can rinse it with, then rinse that with water. The filter tray can also be cleaned out in a similar way. And the filter can be cleaned by removing these individual pieces and either washing them with soapy water and drying them, or you can also soak this in white vinegar and distilled water for like 30 minutes to an hour and then rinse it out and it'll get rid of any kind of buildup of mineral deposits on the filter like you can see here after quite a significant amount of usage. There's not much in the box besides some packing materials, the user manual, and the USB cable. And it is shipped with foam that's not styrofoam, so you can't recycle that. That's gonna go right in the garbage. But there's not much of it, so it is what it is. Let's take a look at the air cooler. And here it is. This has been running pretty much nonstop for a month. It's been both hot and humid and hot and dry. Strange thing for the Midwest. So when it's been hot and humid out, this has been run with the air conditioning and I was running it like that when I first got it. So I didn't really run any tests on that just yet. But then over the last week or so, it's been hot and dry and I've been able to use this with the windows open some days just to get a, a sense of what its performance is when it's quite dry outside and warm. An interesting mix of scenarios that I've been using it in, and it seems like its performance is right on par with that of the Arctic Air Ultra. But we'll put that to the test in a moment. Let's talk about functionality. On top, it has two buttons and three LEDs, as well as the color LED that illuminates the tank. The right button is for the fan speed, and if you press it, it turns the unit on and then cycles through the three different fan speeds. The left button is for the not for the left button is not for the UVC, but is for turning on and off the ultrasonic transducer. It's also used for turning on and off the color LED light or changing the colors as well. The fan in this unit is a bit quieter than the Arctic Air Ultra. I think that's due to the improvements in the efficiency and the control circuitry as well as the way that it's driving the fan because this unit uses a maximum of five watts. I'll go ahead and turn it on. And the first thing you notice is the unit spinning up. Kind of sounds like the Arctic Air Ultra. 
It's a little bit of water in there still, so there's some cool air coming out immediately. And it draws about 4.75 watts. And that's with the fan on high, the ultrasonic transducer on, as well as the, the color LED is on as well. And it's in blue right now. And if I cycle through, I don't think it'll change too much based on the various colors that I pick. No. If I turn it off, it drops down by about 100 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts, depending on the color. But that's more of a supply regulation than it is how much the LED itself is using as far as power. So this is the unit on high. On medium, it uses, uh, uses about 3.3 watts. And on low, it uses about 1.8 watts. Now you might be picking up on the microphone the ultrasonic transducer, it might sound a lot louder, but that's because I'm right over the top of this. If you're sitting back a few feet, you don't really hear it at all. Also, after 30 minutes, the ultrasonic transducer goes into a lower power mode where it keeps pretty much a continuous temperature at the output, but after 30 minutes, it's pretty much saturated the filter, and so it backs off to where it can regulate the amount of moisture coming out of the unit so it doesn't start to drip down into that filter tray and collect water in there. But you will notice sometimes with these units that if it is a little bit more humid out, some water might collect in the bottom of this filter tray. But I think it's by design so that this filter as it's sitting down in here, the, the filter pieces right at the bottom are making contact with the bottom of this filter tray. A little bit of water will sit down inside there and keep this wet. Whereas the Arctic Air Ultra, it had this issue where the two outer filter elements, these two and these two, would pretty much continuously dry out. And the ultrasonic transducer would only keep this middle six elements wet. So a nice improvement made with this either through the, by, by the filter material that this uses or the ultrasonic transducer or whatever combination. I guess speaking of filters, the one on the left is the Arctic Air Ultras filter and the one on the right is the one that's shipped with this basin. This really feels like it is made of cotton or, or maybe a slight cotton polyester blend. It feels very squishy and cotton-like, whereas this is much more spongy and doesn't really feel like there's much cotton in it. On the listing page, it says that it's made of cotton, but it really doesn't feel like it is. I'm not sure performance-wise if the cotton is a better material. It kind of seems like this might have been a cost optimization and that this is really kind of a more preferred material. But we'll see when it comes to the performance. As far as the washability and, and the maintenance on it, they're pretty much the same. and. I haven't tried it, but base and say you can actually pull these filter elements out and clean them individually and put them back in again. Whereas I don't know if this would actually survive being manually taken apart, but I haven't tried it. That's the filters. Let's take a look at the user interface a little further. If I have this unit on, if I double tap on this button, the wavy button, it'll turn off, it'll turn off, the ultrasonic transducer and the LED will go from blue to white. If I double tap it again, it will go from white to blue and turn the ultrasonic transducer back on again. Usually it, of course it's going to do this now, usually it works pretty well. As you might have noticed, the capacitive touch or the microcontroller firmware seems to have a bug or something where it just kind of jumps to turning the light back on and you can pretty easily get it to just cycle through the colors whereas double pressing has to be pretty quick and sometimes if it's too quick it'll still turn the color LED back on so most of the time the capacitive touch stuff works well but there is another version out there that actually as of this recording is cheaper than this unit that has micro switch buttons instead of capacitive touch and a slight difference in the way that the LEDs look and also has some cool rings around the buttons to indicate when they're actuated. If I had to go back and buy these again, I would, I would buy that version because it just looks a bit cooler and I, I after a while of using these capacitive touch buttons, I my, my preference is towards 
actual clicky buttons. To fill this thing up, all you gotta do is pour water right there. It couldn't be any easier. They, they removed that flap that was in the Arctic Air Ultra that it seemed nice, but it had an issue where for me at least, when I would open it up and fill it with water, it would sometimes close. <laughs> and then I would splash water everywhere. Happened a couple of times, but it's just nice to have this like recessed thing where you just pour the water on top and you know it's full when you start to see water creeping up the side of this. Just be careful not to fill it right up at the top because it's not leak proof. It will leak out the side. So you can either look at the front of the unit through here to kind of guide you or just look at it over the top. Having the colored LED on when you're filling it helps too, especially when you're filling it at night and it's in a, a room with low light. So let's pop the hood. So this is it. Inside you've got the tank and the ultrasonic transducer and the multicolor LED, which is in the back there. You can kind of see all the electronics that are just sitting back here. They're actually way up at the top. You can also see there's a little bit of mineral deposits that are forming on the bottom here because we have really hard water and some of those minerals just get through the ultrasonic transducer and collect underneath there. But with this design, it's really easy to get inside there and clean that out. It's pretty nice. All right, let's talk about performance. Over the last couple of weeks, the weather has been interesting. It's been quite difficult to test this and get consistent results out of it, not because of the unit, but because the weather has been changing so much. So it made it difficult to get repeatable, consistent test results. So let's talk about fan performance. I measured on the highest speed, the output of 107.48 cubic feet per minute. On medium, it achieved 87.15 cubic feet per minute, and on low, 72.6. That is actually about 10% lower than the Arctic Air Ultra. And I think that's due to the fact that whatever changes were made in the circuitry resulted in lower power consumption by almost 38% and reduced the output of the fan, or they chose a different fan, the 38% reduction in power is really quite amazing. And to only have the airflow reduced by 10% really isn't that noticeable. Now, cooling. The first set of cooling tests were the baseline performance. That was on a day when it was pretty warm outside with the windows open and the humidity was higher. Uh, in this case, I was targeting around 55% humidity. I got that and then some. The humidity started at about 50% and I was trying to stay in that 50 to 55% range, but it ended up climbing to about 62% toward the last run of tests that I did on this. I thought that that would actually decrease the cooling output significantly, but to my surprise, it pretty much stayed on par with what I had been getting already, which was on the high speed, about 914.8 BTU per hour. On medium, 743.9 BTU per hour, and on low, 615.6 BTU per hour. The next test was looking for a nominal range where the humidity was slightly lower, and this one, it did quite well. It was able to achieve 842.4 and 1251.9 BTU per hour cooling performance, depending on what fan speed setting was selected. How does that performance compare to kind of the baseline, which is the Arctic Air Ultra? On the, in the minimal performance test run, there was only a 3.2% difference in cooling performance between this unit and the Arctic Air Ultra. Now on the nominal performance, where it was more in the range of optimal humidity, the Arctic Air Ultra performed considerably better, about 27.9% better than this unit. That's where this unit is averaging about 1,037 BTU per hour, and the Arctic Air Ultra is averaging about 1,439 BTU per hour. More testing is needed to kind of tease out what's going on here, but there's one takeaway. This thing does perform well, and it does provide a significant cooling effect. It seems to me that this filter might be tuned for cost effectiveness, but also it might be designed to still evaporate well when the humidity is higher, whereas the cotton may not work as well when the humidity is high. But when the humidity is low, this may just kind of peter out and kind of flatten out as far as its evaporation rate, and this just takes over and, and works 
much better. That's just a, a thought as to what might be going on here. The easy thing about it is I can just swap these filters out and see if the cooling performance changes, which I'll be doing in a separate video. So subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss that video. Overall, this unit is quite good. It's nice to see that the power consumption has continued to drop and the overall design and build quality of this has it is gone even a step up from that of the Arctic Air. And that being quite a impressive step up from a very expensive evaporative cooler that I tested before that, which will remain nameless. It's easy to clean the unit. It does help reduce the air conditioning runtime when you're using this in conjunction with your air conditioning. And it performs well through a wide range of environmental conditions. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.